Huzzah! We have a Woo! champion! Woo! <laughs> the T-Rex, the Tyrant King above all Tyrant Kings. This one sucks! Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is a show for you. Welcome to episode 40 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Finally, George, we are here. We are going to pick the champion of T-Rex. This is a huge milestone in my life when I can put T-Rex behind me, but... I'm sure you are looking forward to it. Sort of. Uh, I'm afraid of ruining a lot of people's favorites, but I'm here to pick the best nonetheless. In the previous nine videos, I pointed a champion of each manufacturer, and today George is going to pick the best overall scientifically accurate T-Rex model. So if you remember, George, of the champions, you picked two juvenile T-Rex figures, one from Beast of the Mesozoic and one from Schleich. Of those two juvenile figures, which one of those would you say is the most scientifically accurate? I would have to say the Beast of the Mesozoic really knocked it out of the park with the scientific accuracy because we do have specimens of young Tyrannosaurs and uh, for example, like Jane or Black Beauty, and those are really faithfully reconstructed in the Beast of the Mesozoic figure. For the Schleich model, it does approximate what a juvenile T-Rex would look like, but I see less evidence of what we know about juveniles represented on the Schleich figure. So for a juvenile figure, you would pick the Beast of the Mesozoic as the most scientifically accurate. Correct. Now, just to throw a wrench into the works, George, PNSO created a baby T-Rex called Aaron that was very unique and special. If you could only add one young T-Rex, would you pick that PNSO model or would you still go with the Beast of the Mesozoic's Juvenile? Ooh, that's a tough question because so far the youngest Tyrannosaur that we have found, there are no baby T-Rexes or T-Rex eggs found as of yet, but the youngest T-Rex found is estimated to be like a two-year-old T-Rex, I think by the name of Chomper. I don't feel confident enough to add that to my collection knowing that there's still so much we don't know about baby T-Rexes, so I'm going to have to go with what we do know with the Beast of the Mesozoic model. Okay, so for a non-adult T-Rex, George would add the Beast of the Mesozoic juvenile T-Rex to his collection. Okay, George, that was the easy part. Actually, no, I have one more easy part for you. Thank goodness. Of the champions that you picked from the manufacturer, there were two models that were feathered T-Rexes. Which of those two feathered T-Rexes would you consider the most scientifically accurate? Oof. This is difficult because we don't have much evidence for feathers on T-Rex aside from relatives like Eutyrannus that were found with feather and tegumentary structures on their skin. Mm, I think we're going to have to kind of go out and say that the Dinodana uh, feathered T-Rex has a more realistic feather texture similar to that of emus, ostriches, and rheas than the other T-Rex. And I would have to say as for natural coloration, that one is more in line with what we see in most animals. So I'm going to have to pick the Dinodana uh, T-Rex. So from a scientific standpoint, is there any way that you could pick a feathered T-Rex as the overall champion at this point in time? Probably not. Mostly because we do have skin impressions preserved from T-Rex on a couple of specimens, but none of them show those feathers. Now, there is the argument that feathers are only preserved in certain types of sediment and that the T-Rex skin specimens didn't have that kind of fine sediment that would preserve the feathers but because we have found at least over 50 individual t-rex specimens without any feather or integumentary structures resembling feathers on them i'm going to have to lean on the side of picking a t-rex that doesn't have feathers Okay, George, that was the easy part. If we now move on to the hard part, if we set aside the juvenile T-Rexes and the feathered T-Rexes, we have six adult T-Rexes, a champion from each of the remaining manufacturers to evaluate. It was Papo, PNSO, Namu, Hollandoid, Rebor, and Mojo. Which would be the worst of the manufacturer champions? Sorry, but it's the Mojo one. It has great colors, but when it comes to scientific accuracy, it's at the bottom of the list. All right, which one would you eliminate next? After that, I would have to pick the Papo one. Now, for Papo, you determined that the 
green running T-Rex was their most scientifically accurate model, but that you would actually prefer the standing T-Rex because it reminded you of Rexy from Jurassic Park. You're knocking both of those off in terms of scientifically accurate as compared to the other models? Yes, because they were modeled after the movies. Even though the green running Papo T-Rex has the right stance, a lot of its other proportions and features aren't as scientifically accurate. Excellent. Now it's going to get difficult on you, George. You have the Namu Obsidian Tyrant, the Rebor, Kiss Mountain, the Howling Good T-Rex, and the PNSO Cameron. Which of those are you going to pick as the most scientifically accurate T-Rex model currently on the market? I'm going to have to say it's Cameron from PNSO. Huzzah! We have a Woo! champion! Woo! <laughs> The T-Rex, the Tyrant King above all Tyrant Kings. So out of the four, the one least scientifically accurate would be the non-Mu ones because those are in a way type of T-Rex modeled after the movies. So it's not going to have those scientific accuracies that we have made in recent years about T-Rexes. So those are off the list. I would say that the Halong Good T-Rexes definitely rank above the non-Mu. The quality and the textures of the skin sculpt are amazing, especially the accuracy of the anatomy of both the skull and the body. So I would definitely put them above Nanmu and Papo. This is where it gets difficult because Rebor does include a lot of those scientific accuracies in their model, just like the PNSO model does. Now, this is where I might get, you know, a little bit of heat in the comments there are lips on the Rebor model. There are no lips on the Cameron model. I'm going to go on the side of like no lips, even though I do like the lip look. I also look at the other things. For example, the PNSO one has very detailed tiny scales, whereas the Rebor one has them a little bit larger. And I also like the brown coloration of the PNSO T-Rex in contrast to the Rebor darker colors. I will say I have both models because it was such a hard decision between accuracy for myself, but ultimately I did like the representation that the PNSO model did with Cameron. So overall, you are saying that PNSO Cameron is the most accurate T-Rex model currently on the market. Yes, based off what we know concretely in the paleontological record without making assumptions, just based on the scientific facts that we have at the moment, I would say Cameron from PNSO takes the cake. You should be a politician with that answer because, boy, you hedged the crap out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know how much paleo fans and dino fans love their dinosaur toys because I'm one of them. And if someone said something bad about one that I liked... I would like to be told in a respectful way as well. <laughs> All right. Instead of like, this one sucks. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to add on T-Rex? There will never be a shortage of T-Rex models, and they will always be updated based on new findings that we make. What I think is cool is that there are so many different kinds of T-Rexes, both from the movies and scientific literacy that we can collect and over time we see that progression change with more new discoveries and some things that we thought were wrong might end up being right and some things that we thought were right might end up being wrong that's just science it evolves just like the dinosaur toys and i just want to say that i do enjoy t-rex figures but there is a lot of them out there i just hope that toy companies give more love to all the other dinosaurs as well uh, instead of making many versions of different T-Rexes. <laughs> okay, there you have it. George has identified that Cameron, the T-Rex from PNSO, is the most scientifically accurate figure currently on the market. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like and a thumbs up. And as always, please consider happyhentoys.com for all of your dinosaur needs. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.